Up until this point, I was of the belief that Donald Trump doesn't actually believe the claims that he's making about voter fraud. He's saying it as part of a grift in order to raise money for his super PAC and pay down his campaign debt. He's saying this because he wants to rally the base ahead of the Georgia runoffs, although now that may be backfiring. I never actually believed that he believed his own delusions. However, a new report is actually saying that he did believe his delusions and he kind of convinced himself that he did in fact win. And on top of that, he seriously contemplated just refusing to leave come January 20th. Literally trespassing. This is absolutely bonkers, but let's uh, let's learn some more about this. This is from Peter Weber of Yahoo News, who explains President Trump was privately coming to terms with his loss to President-elect Joe Biden, but he has now reversed and dug in deeper, not only spreading misinformation about the election, but ingesting it himself, CNN reports, egged on by advisors like Rudy Giuliani and Jenna Ellis, who are misleading Trump about the extent of voting irregularities and the prospects of a reversal. One advisor told CNN, he's been fed so much misinformation that I think he actually thinks this thing was stolen from him. Even the Electoral College formalizing Biden's win did not appear enough to shake Trump from his delusions of victory, CNN says, but it is adding urgency to a push by several of his advisors to gently steer Trump toward reality. Discussions of Trump's post-presidency future tend to go nowhere because Trump all but shuts down, CNN reports. In his moments of deepest denial, Trump has told some advisors that he will refuse to leave the White House on Inauguration Day only to be walked down from that ledge. The possibility has alarmed some aides, but few believe Trump will actually follow through. I am stunned by this. Like, it's it's shocking, but it shouldn't be shocking. But yet, it, it's still, honestly, like, I feel as if Trump is still managing to defy my expectations. So he actually has convinced himself that he won. And whenever they talk about his career, perhaps even 2024, he shuts down because he just won't accept that he lost. This is beyond pathetic. And you would think that his aides wouldn't have to do this. I mean, of course, they're going to work for him and try to convince him to do the right thing. But he has family members like his wife, Ivanka Trump, who actually he'd listen to. So where are they? Why aren't they talking him down from this ledge? Why aren't they trying to get him to grapple with reality? Like, I don't understand. Like, it almost seems cruel. And I don't care about Donald Trump. But if he was my family member, I would be trying to to talk some sense into him because this this is insane this is bizarre now when it comes to him saying he refuses to leave on inauguration day because like it or not when the clock strikes 1201 he's out and if he doesn't leave he's trespassing so i just have to say this because i know that we're all thinking this and it's probably inappropriate for me to admit this but i want to say it <laughs> i want to see him refuse to leave, and I want to see Secret Service, like, escort him out by force. I think that would be hilarious. I'm sorry. We all are thinking it. You're thinking it. I think that would be so hilariously entertaining. It it would be surreal to see, and I want to see it. <laughs> I'm sorry, but, like, if we're going to have a reality TV show... Uh, as a star as president, I want the entertainment value that comes with it, and I want it all. I, I want to see this. I, I want it to be a spectacle, because I couldn't care less about Joe Biden's inauguration. In fact, I think I'm probably going to avoid Twitter and the internet on that day, because everyone will be insufferable, giving him way too much credit than he actually deserves. But if anything is going to make me tune in, it's the possibility of Donald Trump refusing to leave. I want to see it. I, I want to see that dumpster fire. I think it would be hilarious. Um, but on the flip side, you know, that's... It's worrying. But after 12.01, Biden is president now. The nuclear launch codes flip over to Joe Biden. Like, there's nothing that you can do. You're out of options. There's literally not a single thing you can do. So if you refuse to leave, you're trespassing. And I just think that, like, it's the perfect end to this 
era in American politics, assuming that this is actually the end of the Trump era and he doesn't become president again in 2024. But I think it would be just like the, the cherry on top of this shit Sunday that was the Trump era. And I think it would be funny. I'm sorry. Everyone thinks this. Nobody wants to admit this, but we all want to see it. We all want to see Donald Trump dragged out. We want to see him try to like barricade himself in the Oval Office by flipping over the desk and pushing it against the fucking the door. I think it would be hilarious. Um, it won't amount to much, which is why I'm not worried. Like, if there was actually a feasible threat that he would try to, like, launch some sort of a coup by staying in the Oval Office and refusing to leave, then I would take it seriously and think it was a problem. But this would be just him refusing to leave and then subsequently getting escorted out by Secret Service. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, I don't know if he'll ever come to terms with reality. But either way, this is genuinely sad. Like, if I actually cared about Donald Trump, if he was my family member, I would be so concerned. Like, if this was my uncle or father who was doing this, I would really, like, try to talk them down from this state of delusion that they're in because it's unhealthy. But it seems like Donald Trump's family, they're all so intimidated, they're afraid to confront Donald Trump. So he's going to continue to spiral and, um... Things like this are going to uh, leak out that he's possibly not going to leave office. That, yeah, that's that's entertaining, uh, to say the very least. Mike is the worst progressive on YouTube. Please don't subscribe to him or become a patron. David Dole is so much better. Trust me, folks. He's doing a great job. He really is. Okay? <laughs>